Everybody wants to sell better. I mean, literally everyone wants to improve their output. They want to improve the number of emails, the conversations, the deal close. You probably don't quite know what you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis that can help you to improve. And I got the remedy or a solution that can help you with that. And it's in this episode. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, yes, as you can see, I'm recording from my little home office here. I have uh, the one and only James Buckley on this podcast. Now, the, the thing that I love about this, James runs an organization that, uh, and all they produce a lot of content all around selling better. And as I mentioned in a teaser, they're going to give you guidance on how you can sell better, but they're going to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. They have a daily show that really does that. At the end of the episode, James tells you all about that and how it works. But particularly in this episode, James breaks down emails and phone and how we can do a better job at that when it comes towards improving our game. Whether it's like the emails that we're writing, how can we make them better? The phone calls we're having, the conversations we're doing, how can we make those better on when we're reaching out to prospects? He gave us a couple tips. Um, or he's going to give you a couple uh, major tips. Um, you're getting this in the past because I talked to him already. But two uh, two major tips uh, when it comes towards the openers. And then we talk about the ways that we can make the email better. And there's several things that he gives us on that. If this is your first time listening to the show, go ahead and hit subscribe. We'll make sure to notify you every time we produce a piece of content. And if you love it, please, please hit me up on LinkedIn. Donald C. Kelly. Donald C. Kelly. As we dive in. Get a chance to see how James, why James love e a phone so much. He said that's his default. And you're going to hear and see how masterfully he crafts an, uh, an opener as well as grabbing your prospect's attention. Check it out. James, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. Long time coming. Uh, this is going to be exciting. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. And, and for those of you, I, I bragged about it in a teaser. James and I, we connected about... Like I think officially, officially, like about a month and a half ago, then we met in person a few, yep. uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago and from this episode going live. And then now um, it's like we're a family now. So it's, it's, okay, it's been that's fun. how it goes with me. I like to say that it's like a big magnet, you know, it just pulls everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> he does. And like I mentioned, you guys got to connect with him. You can check out some of his content on LinkedIn. I have some links down in the show notes as always on that. Um, but James, I bragged about you and some of the things you're doing. Email, phone calls. You are, you know, this is you. You told me you were, you're the phone guy. Like it's, it's like you were born yeah, with a phone. I default to the phone, phone I think. <laughs> well, yeah. why, let's, let's start off there. Why do you default to the phone? Uh, my, so you may, maybe you've already picked up on it, right? My vo For those of you that are listening, my voice is powerful. I have a positive voice, meaning mm. like when you answer the phone and I say something like, hey, Donald, what's happening? It's really hard for you not to be like, hey, who is this? Right. <laughs> and it's like it, there's like a curiosity play. Or if I say, Donald, thanks for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? Mm. I sound really serious in that moment. Right. I like the phone because the phone gets me to the emotion really fast. And I think that's what people respond to on the phone more so than they do the email where it kind of takes a minute to get to the meat of an email. And if they don't read on, they might miss it and delete it. Or if they yeah. don't know you, they might not read it at all. A, a, a strong tone on an opener is really hard to say no to. You, you want to keep going. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's a, the, you know, it, it's so hard for people to get that, you know, like to, to think about how they can get that strong opener or to utilize that, that opener. And I, I think go back to what you said with your personality too, makes it very infectious where you actually, I, and what I feel with, go back to knowing you now, I don't, it's not like a, um, a ploy. It's just you, your personality that's just connecting with people. And I think, when I first started selling, I had a sales manager who was, you know, she was, uh, he was, she was great. And I had a sales trainer who was fantastic. I was trying to be them and then I sound robotic, but it, and, but it wasn't, I wasn't being Donald. It wasn't until I got into my own shoe, then I started to see that difference. And I think that's what, if there's one thing I just got from you so far, use that personality that you have, whatever it might be with a great opener to be able to you know, when you default into the phone, that can make different. I want to, I want to, I, I agree with you, but I want to double click on it first because Please. there is a deeper level to this. And I want to say go. this so that all your listeners can hear it. Every personality type that is a seller 
has a personality type and a, in a buyer that gravitates towards their personality, that seller's personality. Let me give you yeah. an example. I am a big ball of energy. When I call somebody, when I get on a Zoom, I tell a lot of jokes, I make people laugh, and you're smiling, right? Yeah. Everybody smiles when I say it, but it's not for everybody, right? Yeah. There are people out there that I simply don't sell well to. I'm too big for them. I'm too loud for them. Mm. I'm too animated for them or too aggressive in some ways. That's okay because I work with another seller that's very reserved and quite calm and she delivers with grace and is very poised. Yeah. And she sells fantastically to those individuals. But if you're a high ball of energy, just like me, it's impossible that you're going to say no to me because we live on that same high frequency. Yeah. So you have to like be self-aware enough to one, look at your prospect and decide, am I too much energy for this person? Should I tone it down a little bit? Right. Proactively. Yeah. Or is this even someone I should be speaking with judging by their LinkedIn profile, the content they create, these people are rather serious. I think, I think my friend Leslie would be a better fit to talk to these people. Right? If you can ask yourself these questions and do what's best for your prospect, yeah. your company will close more deals. It's still sourced by you. Mm. I love it. Uh, I absolutely love that. Um, but it, would that be something that I need to be uh, have the IQ to be aware of as a seller, or is that something I need to get management involved in? Um, you know, I think it's probably a mix of both, and it depends yeah. on the individual, really. Some people have a natural gift of self-awareness. I'm, I, I like to think I'm one of those people, mm -hmm. uh, but some people are very unaware of the type of personality that they have. So management kind of has to step in and say things like, Hey, I'm going to give you some feedback right now. That might be a little tough. Right. And those types of conversations have to happen if that person is to grow personally or professionally. And that's, that's our whole goal, right? As humans yeah. is to become quote unquote successful, whatever that looks like to you. It's different for everybody. Um, somebody that grew up poor has a very different level of success they're shooting for than somebody that grew up with a silver spoon, mm. right? Those people don't have the same definition of success. So when it comes to management getting involved in these types of conversations, it's very important that you coach not just the numbers, not just the performance, but also the human. How does this person become a better human? If you're coaching to that plus the other things, not only will you be more successful as a leader, but that person will be more invested in you as a leader. And that's a big win. Mm. All right. So going back to this whole default, your phone default, one thing we talked about so far is understanding your, you know, the, the way that people engage with a phone, uh, with, with a phone call. Two, you talked about the personality type. Um, and we talked a little bit about openers as well. I want to go back and double click on the openers. Um, are there certain openers that you feel, you, you gave me a couple there, but are there certain yeah. openers you feel that are working right now when it comes to word utilizing the phone independent of personalities? Great stuff. Uh, so I got this from Sarah Brazier and I hated it when I heard it, <laughs> but she proved me wrong. She proved me wrong because I started to use it. I used to hate, how you doing today? It was like the worst thing in my ears. Okay, I hate it right I now. Started, so. <laughs> well, so I, 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 hey Donald, how you doing today, right? Like when I first heard her say it, I was like, oh man. But I'll tell you what, it's the way she says it. Yeah. And when I adopted it to myself and I used my very authentic, like, you know, tones to say it, it felt less contrite. It felt less forced and it works. People, people will often say back to me pretty consistently, I'm fine. Who's this in that <laughs> tone? And you're like, man, this just became so easy. I'm good so this is even asking. This is before you even, they don't know who you are or they who you are. They have no rep. idea who you are. Absolutely. Hey, what's up, Donald? This is James. How are you? Right? It works the same way if you mm. tell them who you are. But you can leave that out. I never start with my name's James with sell better. They don't know me. They don't care about that. And when you start with that, they often just, they're already checked out mentally. Hi, yeah. Donald. This is James with sell better. And we're the leading provider of nobody fucking cares. <laughs> no one. Nobody wants to know. Nobody. You're a sales guy already. Yeah, it's like when you hop on a Zoom call and somebody's like, all right, what are we doing today? And you're like, let me tell you the history of our company. Just take oh, that out gosh. of your deck. <laughs> uh, can I tell you a story on that? Um, yeah. 
I had a, I was selling a software. The IT director got him. It was a, is a yeah, IT director. He's been through multiple demos. He said, "I like what I'm hearing so far. Um, if you, when we do a demo um, with the team, please, please do not. We don't want to see any marketing stuff. We don't care about the marketing stuff. We already, we don't want to hear about the history. Just go. Let's just get straight to the meat. And yes. IT, you know how they are. So what did I do when I got that demo? I followed dude's word verbatim." Because yep. in the culture that we were taught, and especially go back 15 now, people were tied to this idea like you are, you have to do the slide when you open up go to meeting. You can tell how That's old right. it was. But you That's have right. to go through this and you have I to I want this logo on screen yeah. for every single demo that you do. Yeah, and it wasn't it, nobody really cared about that, and, and then that's when I first recognized it, and it taught me the platinum rule that you treat others the way that they want to be treated, rather than the golden rule, treat others the way that you would like to be treated. Yes, I might want to see those logos to make me feel good, but I don't care about that. I can go look at your website and see that stuff. When you know John started a company, I want to see how can this solve this problem you got my interest with from that LinkedIn conversation, DK. I am 100% with you, but I want to defend the marketers for a moment. Oh, come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so a lot of salespeople come on these types of shows and poo-poo mm -hmm. all over the marketers and their thinks and their needs and what they think is important. Uh, I actually support the logo thing. Mm -hmm. I think that we should be representing our logo as often as possible. Here's what I disagree with. Yeah. It's not the focal point of anything at any point for any reason. So on one side of the fence, salespeople should be displaying their logo on a lot of things throughout a demo. However, I find that it should be rather subtle. It doesn't need to be in their face. The other side of that coin is that marketers need to understand no salesperson ever has had a prospect say, you know what? I wasn't going to buy this, but now that you showed me the logo, I got to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I, the way I saw this on you, so you went, uh, uh, listen, James and I had a call uh, before in the prep call. We were talking, and James went and I was showing me some, you know, back end things that he was working on and blah, blah, blah. And I noticed it on the slide that you shared with the, you had the logos, and I saw those logos because we all saw them. But the, yep. you're right, the focal point, it was a very simple, and, you know, you had the fact that you had it black and white. I was like, Okay, maybe that's Very his default. Simple. That's all they want is simple. They don't need anything crazy. <laughs> that's interesting. So it was it was a black and white. He had the numbers. He had the data. It looked cool. Uh, but then the logos were in the grayscale, and you had yep. that in the middle or is it bottom? Right, in the, I remember. right in the center on the first yeah. page. And it's not none of them were my logo. They were all no. logos we work with. <laughs> yeah. So I, and I think that's it. You know, the, the idea there too. Going back to what you're saying, like the s subtle nature of it to remind. But also the fact is it's not the focal point that takes yeah. away from it, it, it more it's like the salt that accentuates the the food that we're eating. You know, it it's accentuates the, seasoning the turkey. The seasoning for the, the turkey. Seasoning. <laughs> Bam. There you go. Bam, like emerald. <laughs> so, <laughs> or what's the guy right with the salt? I know, right? like the, the, I don't just know the, the tomahawk steak. <laughs> That's all I know about. It. Oh, um, sales evangelist <laughs> listeners, you don't know what you're missing on the video. I'm telling you, <laughs> go back and go check out the video for today's episode. Um, but so w w we have one our openers, two our person uh, personality. We make sure we have a good opener. Are there any other openers? You you know how are you doing? Is there any other openers that you feel right now are working well um, for sellers? And especially we're coming, we're we're doing this in Q4. Yeah. We're going into Q1 yep. uh, next in a couple of week, couple of months. Uh, so I gave face? you the one with, from Sarah, which I am in love with now, mm -hmm. even though I hated it to begin with. Yeah. She changed my mind. The other one that I'll give you is this one. And this comes from Chet Holmes, Ultimate Sales Machine. I love Pastor. Chet. Yeah. Rest have you had his peace, daughter on your show? You connected with That's, her? Uh, I, we did not have his daughter on the show, but I'm a huge fan of hers. And Chet was like my hero. He was like one of the first sales, quote unquote, influencers. It was mine I too, bro. I have the book. in contact right? with. Do you have the book? Oh man. I know. Like, I, the ultimate the sales machine changed my life, right? Because yeah. so here's the opener that I have. If I was calling you, Donald, I would say, Donald, thanks for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? Now you'll mm. notice a couple things about that opener. One, I say your name first. Donald, thanks for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? My Donald, thanks for taking the call is very monotone. And then as I get into, do you have a moment before your next meeting? There's a downward inflection, a drop in my tone. If I set it 
in the opposite direction, here's what it would sound like. Hi, Donald. Thanks for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? Yeah. With that upward inflection. The upward inflection puts me at a, on my heels. I am at your mercy. And you have to give me the green light to have another say, another word. But when I say, Donald, thanks for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? It's more commanding. That sounds really serious. Yeah. There's an authoritative tone in That's my voice. That's the proper term, yeah. There's even, there's even a, like, a, like a potential that there's a problem that you need to address here. Yeah. Right? And that earns more t Yes. Who is this? Right? My name's James. How are you doing today? Right? I'm doing fine. Now, I want to preface this. I've given you two openers. One of them is extremely jovial. Hey, Donald, how are you today? Yeah. Right? The other is a little more serious. Before you make any calls, go to somebody's LinkedIn or whatever social profile you might be able to find and look at a few things. It takes two and a half, maybe three minutes to stop at these places. We'll use LinkedIn as an example. Stop at their profile picture. Do they look serious? Are they staring right into the camera like <laughs> a death stare? They're probably going to take themselves really serious. Maybe try that second opener with them. Yeah. Do they, do they look like me, all happy with their thumbs in the air, super smiling with like a silly photo? Okay, well, you could probably lighten up with them and be like, hey, how you doing? And they'll be more responsive. That's one thing you can do. It takes literally no time at all. I have a few other things that you yeah. can do to help you decide which opener, but those two openers with different personalities, they work really well. All right, so we're going to leave you on a cliffhanger with that part for the phone. But, you know, James did definitely gave us some interesting things. To de he defaults to the phone. The phone clearly, I didn't ask him the question, but clearly works for you. Um, it, you know, you're, you give us some opener ideas. You gave us some opportunities to make sure that we sell the way that we sell to our personality. And if I, my personality doesn't mesh, get it to somebody else on our team. Management could be engaged in this process. When it comes towards that, I want to go to the other side of the house now, James, because you're email connoisseur as well. So it's not I like this it. one. And I know you, you love, um, you know, social just as much as I do as well. And we'll probably save that conversation for another day. So you guys have to come back for James. But let's talk about emails now. What are what's working with emails for you right now when it comes to um, reaching out to folks? I'm going to give you four words that are going to change everything about the emails you're writing in 2025. Here we go. The shorter, the better. Mm, mm, mm. I couldn't agree the shorter, more with that. The shorter, the better. There are so many factors involved in those four words. Let's break a few of them down on the show here. The first one is that if you're reaching out directly to decision makers, you're working a top-down approach, the chances that that authority figure, that decision maker, reads most of their messages on their mobile device is pretty yeah. high. I hope that they don't have to scroll six times to read your Lord of the Rings novel when you wrote them an email <laughs> about your product, which is probably a bad email to send anyway. Yeah. Right? Think smaller. So here's the tip. This is the tip I was given in college. It's a tip I've been given professionally many times. I still struggle with it today, but I'm getting better. The best skill that a seller that writes can build is the removal of unnecessary words. Oh, money. Come on. Preach, James. Preach. I'm an author. I wrote a book. And After I can tell you. After you write something for a prospect, take a step back and read it out loud. Do you talk like that? Do you have ands and sos and ums built in that are represented by punctuation and continuations that probably don't need to be there? Just highlight all of it and hit delete. <laughs> and then read it again. Chances are good. It's 100% more effective and to the point. And I, will, I guarantee your responses will go up and to the right because you've made your messaging easier to read. I'm a fantasy reader mm. and my description is absurd. So I find myself going in and hitting delete over and over on different words. And then when I'm done, I have this like shrunk down the only thing that matters is this message type yeah. of feel, and my responses are better for it. Yeah, you know, um, I, I've, I'm fascinated with that. I've, I, I did. A, there was. I've always gone to the that that default of looking at my 
prospects emails that they're going to be reading them on a mobile device which was you know you it's, it's true we all see that one but the other component to this is when i first started writing and i wrote my first book um it was the editor came back and would take like three sentences and put it in like you know like five words and i'm just like how did she do that and a lot of it was just like you said it was unnecessary word and the thing about it part and go back it was the smaller message, shorter message was way more powerful than that long, um, you know, elaborate scheme that I was writing uh, to the yep. prospect. And all the component too that I really like when it comes to the shorter, you're probably going to go towards this as well, is that the buyer just wants to get what's what's in it for me from this thing. Can you get to that point the quickest? And especially if it's a relevant message, it resonates so much more. So instead of me giving you the sandwich, I'm giving you the Atkins diet, so to speak. Um, I love that. What a great analogy. Uh, I'll give somebody a tactical thing that you can do to make this easier for you right now. Everybody's using chat GPT, right? So here's the prompts that you can do. Ask chat GPT, Rewrite your email the way you would write it, put it into chat GPT and the prompt is rewrite this email and make it shorter, right? So boom, it, shrink, it shrinks it down. Your next prompt is make it more about them and less about me. Boom, mm. it rewrites it again and you don't matter anymore. <laughs> and then <laughs> your last prompt is make it so that if they're reading it on a phone, it's easy to read. If you just take those three prompts alone and look at what chat GPT will spit out, not only will you find that that final product is so much more efficient for your reader, but you did so much less work. <laughs> I'm putting this down right now. This is going in the show notes, guys. <laughs> I'm literally writing that down. I think those three yeah, prompts I think, people, are genius. I think people have forgotten that they are capable of thought because yeah. we're putting all these tools in front of them that they're like, Okay, instead of me writing an email and then asking ChatGPT to improve that email because that's my voice being altered by AI, yeah. we're like, I'm going to let AI do this for me. Hey, write an email to the VP of this company. Bro, and then all of those emails starts off with, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. As soon as I see that garbage, I'm like, I am well. Stop asking. And this is going into the trash because I know it's not you. <laughs> so I always talk about this because I think it's important. First of all, shout out to my good friend, Will Aiken, who does great merch. I wore to the event that we had just last yeah. week. Wore a sweatshirt that said, I hope this email finds you well. Uh, WillAiken.com. Check him out. Uh, when... When here's what happens, we, everybody has the same. I said this at the show, right? Everybody has the same way that we come into work. Everybody has the same way we come back from lunch. We look mm -hmm. at our inbox and we scan and we're looking for just a few things, an indicator that this is automated. I don't even have to open it to know that yep. it immediately gets a checkbox and then stuff from strangers that I'm not expecting that I don't want gets a checkbox. We scroll up to the top, we hit the trash can and what's left is the stuff we actually want to read. So it's really important when you're sending emails that one, have a good subject line. We can talk about that. Yep. Two, the preview text has to scream, this is not an automated message. Yeah. Now that does not mean you can, you know, insert, templatize, went to this college, right? Gosh. Saw you're a Wolverine, go Wolverines, right? Like, <laughs> let me talk to you about this data tool, hard pivot, right? It's not good, <laughs> right? Give but me a whiplash like, with hey, that there, James. <laughs> Oh man, it's like, it hurts my neck just thinking about it. But, but when you see that somebody just launched a new feature, when you see something that's actually relevant to your val prop, value proposition for those that don't know that mm -hmm. term, you can turn around and say in the preview text, that new feature that you just launched looks awesome. I would love to learn more about what you want that to do for your clients. Mm. That is completely relevant two sentences fits on a phone 100 percent. i wrote that for you my response that i get when i do that one is what would you like to know <laughs> the best possible response <laughs> that i could possibly get and all i did was catch a signal a trigger if you will whatever you want to call it right and use it in my preview text first that's all i yeah. did so that's that's an interesting point um trigger in the preview text yeah because that's the first thing they look at when they scan <laughs> yeah um 
and that could be a variety of things. And for many of you, your industries, you're going to have a uh, you know bunch of different triggers. And we'll link back to another episode where we talk about triggers in this one uh, for you Number guys. Number one, well. open rate subject line. Thanks. Number one. Interesting. Thanks is uh, okay. So th- thanks. thanks is still out. Is out beating quick question. I was I was always fascinated. Quick question. Oh, I hate quick question. I hate it. Uh, I hated it too, James. I hated it for so long. I stopped. I, I, I t- experimented with it recently, and it came back neutral with um, a campaign that we did. It was r- still around the same level. And I, I believe like, I neutral. Fascinated. I believe neutral. I think yeah. it's so overused at this point, like so many other things. But it's cyclical. You know, it'll yeah. come back. Exactly. In, it'll come back in vogue in ten years. You know. <laughs> But we uh, <laughs> thanks is a good one now. Thanks is working. Is thanks it all is lowercase? Because, and I think or... it's an ego play. I think thanks works because people want to know what they're being thanked for. <laughs> yes, I would. I would open something if it's thanks because, in my view, as the executive of my company, as the podcast, as the you know the the host, and so many different things, and my little ego, like if somebody send that, I'll automatically it's like, oh, it's a fan, or it's yeah. somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell um, you what else gets my attention right away, especially mm-hmm. if you're reaching out to people that actually create on a platform. Yeah, if you reach out and you say loved that piece on, and then fill out the content. If that's your preview text, and, and the, the subject line could be your, le- your most recent post or your recent post, right? And your opener is, loved what you said about X. Oh, these people get my attention right away. I will ignore other people and talk to them. Interesting. Because they actually took the time to go and do 30 seconds worth of like, what does this person do every day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he posted this yesterday. Can I attach what I do to it. If I can, I'm probably gonna. These people are smart people. They're like me. I want to talk to them. I will ignore other templated emails that are obviously spam. All right, James. Great. I love all of this. We got some good subject lines. We got some triggers. What do I say? We're keeping our email short. What are some things you're saying in your email when it comes towards that relevancy factor that's pulling somebody in? Is there a certain formula you follow? Um, because when we talk, you don't have none of these sequences, like, you know, a bunch of automated sequence. You're right. doing stuff. This is like, this is the organic going to country, cooking over a hot stove, a hot yeah. wood fire. Like this is, this is the, <laughs> this is that organic stuff that mama used to come up with in the country. But that's right. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's the recipe though? Like, you know, how do I make that gumbo? What is it that yeah. you're doing every time? Cause you're cooking a new plate so, for everybody. So first of all, the roux is the most important thing. I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but the rule is important if you're making gumbo. So if, (laughs) if I'm looking at my structure of my emails, right, Uh what are they? Uh, so we talked about the subject line. We talked about the preview text. Let's talk about what comes after the preview text. This is the meat. This is the thing that probably matters most. So here's the question to ask yourself. What is the fewest number of words needed to get this point across? And the point is this, and this is the formula, right? Something relevant to what they do equals you could use what I do. That's simple. So I'll give you a good example. Companies like Cirrus Insight struggle to retain their customers because their connection to Salesforce wavers. Mm. Our organization helps companies that use Cirrus Insight have a better experience with a stronger connection to Salesforce. I made that up. No such company exists. (laughs) Right? But if you think about the way that sentence flowed, here's the problem. I'm presenting it. Here's why we exist. I presented it. Now comes what's underneath that. And that's the call to action. Now, a lot of people think the best call to action is, can I have 15 minutes? I absolutely say it's not. Mm. Here's the better call to action. How often are you disconnected from Salesforce and lose productivity? Hit me back. I'll follow. And this is, this is, again, Hit me back is the, you know, part of the call to action, I guess. But then here's the sign off. A lot of people sign off regards. A lot of people sign off sincerely. A lot of people sign off best, right? I used to do these. Now I do, I'll follow up. I'll follow up. I think my reply rate increased like 20% when I changed that at first, like right out of the gate. You're kidding. And, And the whole idea there is that the last thing they read is usually that thing that's like really important. So I want the CTA to stand out, but the other thing I need to stand out is I'm not fucking going anywhere. Yeah. 
I'm coming back at you. Whether it's today, tomorrow, the next day, a week from now, a month from now, I am task oriented. So here's a, um, hear me out on this. Does it make sense? Cause I want to do the experiment and yeah. maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to uh, overcook the gumbo here at the grits. <laughs> Does it make sense <laughs> to experiment with a when? Oh, so I think that you could probably mix it up. So here's, okay. here's what I always say. Your first message is just your first message. Yeah. When you think about outbound messaging as a whole, you can't limit it to one message. So no way. the question becomes, what does my second call to action look like? What does my third call to action look like? All the way up to like my 15th and 20th, right? And each time it's a little bit different. So on the first one, I might be like, I'll follow up. Or uh, like I said, you know, how often are you disconnected? from this, right? Let me hit me back. I'll follow up. But then on my next one, I'm like, yo, I really want to talk about this connection issue that people are having with Salesforce. Let's connect. What's Wednesday at two look like? Got Again, it. very small, right? And then I don't hear anything before Wednesday at two. So at Wednesday at two Oh five, <laughs> I'm calling, <laughs> right? And I'm like, Hey, I guess you're not going to make it. <laughs> And they're like, who is this? And I'm like, oh, remember I sent you that email and said two o'clock, right? And it's a good laugh. I, the, again, like part of this is like messaging and the other part is like your consistency and your personality shining through and that magnet that we all have that has two poles. It pulls some people towards us and it pushes others away. And you can sell really well to the people that are pulled towards your magnet. And you have to be able to recognize the people that are repelled by it. You will never sell to them. Let your colleagues go to them. They might have a better persona for them. Mm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh my But email, email is getting a lot of hate right now because there have been so many tools for so long that have been abused by sellers. Yeah. They were meant, they were meant to help scale very specific messaging. They were meant to help scale a very specific campaign with a very specific context with a very specific call to action. I think what happened was somewhere along the way, we went from MAPs marketing automation platforms to sales engagement platforms. And when you really look at how they're being used, they're basically being used for the same purpose. And one was never supposed to be used like the other. One was built for generic messaging to throw a web, a net out into the sea and pull back all types of things and sift through and find the ones that you want to eat. The other was meant to throw spears at a very specific target yes. from a very good distance, a very specific distance away, right? And that's the only one that I am to kill. Some people throw nets. Some people throw spears. Some people understand the value in knowing when to throw which one. Yes. Come on, James, we could go on for a couple more hours with this stuff, but I want to respect the time. Listen, you gave us a whole lot today. One, when it comes to phone, it's a default and it still works. You gave us ideas about making sure we sell to sell the way that we like to our personality type and then recognizing or having emotion, the, the, the emotional intelligence to recognize that I could probably give somebody else the opportunity to connect with this person that could best do a better job on my team for that. You talked about openers and some of the openers that we can experiment with. We didn't give a whole lot, but if they want to get more, they can go back and connect with you over at Sell Better on LinkedIn. I got a million. Um, he got a million. So he only gave us two. So imagine what he got. So you definitely should connect with James. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, we went over to the email side about the importance of personalization, not what college you went to or the Wolverines, but how we can make sure that email ties to me. And more importantly, that trigger, tie in that preface, um, the trigger that you're trying to get to. Um, whether it's the new role or, you know, the connection or a conversation we had or some kind of content that they have. Um, yeah. Subject lines are important. Emails shorter to the better. They're on phones. And then make sure when you do these emails that you're tying, uh, you know, you're tying quickly. And that call to action, um, experiment with the call to action. Get rid of your sincerely and give that, uh, let them know when you're going to reconnect yeah. with them. Experiment um, with your sign off, dude. The sign, sign off, off is, sign uh, off. when you experiment with the sign off, you're like, oh my God, I had no <laughs> idea this had this kind of impact. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, James, I, I think this content is great. I love it, and I love everything that you always share. I think there is, is money. You, um, the Sell Better team, you guys produce a whole heap of great stuff as well. Can you talk to yeah. us a little bit about that if um, I'm listening to this and I want to learn about Sell Better? 
Absolutely. So the thing that we do best is we host the Sell Better Daily Sales Show and the Market Better Show. The Market Better Show is weekly and the Sell Better Daily Sales Show is exactly what you think. It's a daily show. We are live every day, Monday through Friday, and our job is to bring you the best and brightest in the sales community and just dr drag out all of those great tips and nuggets and tactics that they have and you can go put them into practice yourself. We can get 1% better every day if we simply take the time to learn from others around us and that's the vehicle that sellbetter.xyz will show you. So when you get to the website, sellbetter.xyz, up at the top left corner, you'll see the daily show. Highly recommend you check that out. You have an option. You can sign up for the ones that are relevant to your job now, or you can sign up for the topics that are relevant to the job you have now and the job you want, because Ooh. that is the thing that's going to help us get where we want to go. I absolutely love it. James, you guys are doing amazing stuff for our community. It's, uh, I, I commend you for your, your hard work and the dedication and the craft. And we love it and we appreciate your time today, man. So thank you, James. Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me be here. I appreciate it. Shout out to all the TSE listeners. Mad love to y'all. I'm telling you, that was amazing. That was the one and only James Buckley. Go ahead and connect with him in the show notes. Check out Sell Better and the cool things they're doing. Sell Better, all the details down in the show notes. Um, and I, I'm telling you, I love the concept of the closeout rather than sincerely using something that the prospects would actually engage in. I like that piece. Go ahead and check it out. Find all the details in the show notes. Listen, I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. Most importantly, I want you to raise your level of thinking and I want you to go out and do big things. I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.